Hey there, Cliff Rawlings with Sage Company. In this product spotlight, we're gonna cover the whole tooling line of the Wolf series of tools. The first tool we're gonna to cover in this tooling line is going to be the quarter round PCD in the QCS style. Again, the QCS style slides on and off our QCS plates for quick change adaption. Originally, we were designed for your 6,000 and 5,000 size machines because for the smaller lightweight, they are very aggressive tools designed for epoxy removal, say 30 mils or more. Uh, if you're getting into uh, thin sets, uh, flake broadcast systems, uh, quartz broadcast, lots of different thick coatings, these are really, really effective for. Uh, because they're very aggressive, they, they do have a tendency to gouge the floor below them. So you will have to follow this up with say a 25 grit metal bond or even a wolf claw to remove the gouges and scratches this, this tool does leave behind. We also offer the quarter round PCD in a ring or plate style as you can see here. The unique thing about this is the fact that it was designed originally for the PDG-8000, the larger heavy machines. It has the ability to be bolted onto the head, so all the impact goes into the bolts and the actual cross, rather than the QCS bolts you have on the back. So those tend to get sheared sometimes on the really heavy machines and thick materials. So we recommend to use this on the really heavy, thick materials. Uh, trowel down mortars, things like that, underlayments, overlayments, uh, really, really thick materials. This is a much better tool for that. You can also imagine this is a little bit more aggressive compared to even this because it's like a single row cup wheel versus a double row cup wheel. All of your PCDs are lined up in a single row, whereas these are gonna be spread out a little bit more, like a, almost like a double row. So this does get a little bit more aggressive. And again, you will have to follow this up with a 25 grit metal bond or a wolf claw to remove this. A um, Couple things too you need to know about this is that this one is really good for uneven surfaces. So it's for safety reasons. Again, bolting this to the head. If you have uneven surfaces, this is really good for rough and nasty floors. It'll hold up much better and it's much safer, less likely to flap the machine, which could happen to something like a QCS type adapter. Next up in our Wolf series of tools is the PCD with wear bar. This tool has a wear bar in the middle that's basically like a 30-40 grit hard metal bond. And we have eighth round PCDs that are inverted with the sharp tip pointing upward. So as you can imagine, this does more of a slicing or cutting action basically. Again, most all these tools come in A or B direction, so be very aware of that and make sure you're spinning the machine the correct direction when you're putting all of these PCD tools on your machine. This tool is really good for, it's, it's a little bit less aggressive than the last one, which was the quarter round, um, which is nice though, because this is good to follow with when you're polishing behind it. So you don't have to get as aggressive to follow this. Sometimes you can follow with just a, a 40 grit metal bond is all you need to follow this to get the scratches this leaves behind. Ideally, again, this is for thin mill materials, let's say 15 to maybe 20 mil of materials, let's say epoxies, polyaspartics, um, urethanes, whatever, micro toppings, things like that. Some glue removal as well. But again, the idea is thinner, thin to medium uh, coatings and also doesn't leave a very rough surface behind. So ideal for polishing behind this as well. Again, just a reminder, the smaller uh, QCS style design like this was for your 5Ks and 6Ks, ideally. Uh, they can be used on 8Ks, but be careful, you do have a tendency to break these bolts. Uh, and that's where we get into the plate styles. Moving on to the plate style of the PCD with wear bar. It's the same concept, removes all the same coatings. The big difference is it's basically braced to this plate. You now have the ability to bolt this onto your head. So all of that impact will go onto your cross complete and the bolts. So you don't have any issues with uh, shearing off bolts and things like you have with your QCS. So basically just more of a safety aspect. And again, for really rough floors and really uh, nasty, uh, uneven floors, this is a much better concept and idea than this. So again, ideally we'd really design this for the larger machines like a PDG-8000, for example. One of the newer tools in the Wolf series is this whole PCD. 
as a full round PCD braised in along with an aero segment. This aero segment is also a wear bar, so it's a 3040 grit hard bond metal bond. This is a very aggressive tool for fast removal on thick materials, but this aero segment helps keep it from gouging too deep, so it makes it a little bit easier to follow up. So if you do intend to polish after something like this, you may still have to run a 25 grit metal bond if it's say medium to softer concrete, but hard concrete most likely you can follow up with just a 40 grit metal bond. Again, this tool is designed for very heavy removal, say 40 mils thicker of say urethanes, trowel downs, uh, quartz broadcast systems, all sorts of really heavy, heavy removal. Again, these tools do have, they are directional, so you can see that we have them in A and B direction. And you wanna make sure you always put them on the right direction of the heads. So um, if you have an electric machine, always double check your head direction to make sure it's spinning the correct direction. Otherwise, these tools are expensive and you can damage them and get them dislodged from their brazing. Just a tip, if you do have a SACE propane grinder, all SACE propane grinders spin counterclockwise, which means you always need to order a B direction for those, which is counterclockwise. If you're ever in doubt, just order B direction because if you have an electric machine, you can spin it counterclockwise either way. So it helps you out quite a bit. We also have the full round PCD in the plate style. So again, if you get a really uneven surface floor where it's really bouncing around, it can again bolt this to your head and all the force is driven into this and so it's not gonna break and snap your QCS bolts. So another good option for big heavy machines like the PDG 8000. Really good option, same concept, same coating removal performance, just a little bit safer for very uneven surfaces. Last up in our PCD line of tools is our split PCD, or some people refer to as crushed PCD. Basically, it's the remnants of PCDs that are crushed into small bits and has been put into a binder, just like a normal metal bond. So rather than putting, let's say, a 30 grit or 40 grit or even an 80 grit, we're using crushed or split PCD inside of a, a matrix to hold onto this. So this tool is really designed for light prep, surface prep before coating goes down on typically for soft to medium concrete. Um, it's not a very aggressive tool at all. Uh, it doesn't really leave a very rough profile. It doesn't gouge any way at all. Again, light removal, you can do uh, really light coating removal. So just basically like floor paint, really thin, thin remnants of glues, uh, things like that. You can knock off some thin sets with it again, but really mostly the side is doing most of the action for that. Um, single coat stuff, basically. Uh, it also holds up well for if you've got like a failing coating, say under a really soft concrete because PCD is a really, really hard uh, material, it's gonna hold up to the softer brace of concrete below that coating that's failing that you're removing. So it will hold up to that without actually gouging too bad below it as well. So again, we offer this only in the QCS style like this, so we don't offer it in the full plate or ring. Uh, we offer it in single segment as well as double segment. So again, double, double segments can be designed more for your heavy machines like your PDG 8000, and your single segment's gonna be obviously more aggressive, more down pressure for your 5000s and your 6000 machines. All right, let's talk real thick, gummy, sticky glues, like black mastics, cut back mastic, the real yellow mastic sticky stuff, tungsten carbide scrapers. This is where it's at. Some guys like to refer to them as the mastic slicers. It's basically what it is. It's tungsten carbide, three of them bolted to one bank, one side of this QCS adapter style. You can see this one is set up to go clockwise, so it's an A direction. You can unbolt those and bolt them into the other side or bank and they'll go into the B direction, counterclockwise, so be aware of that. Make sure you're spinning the right direction. That'll be more effective that way. Uh, these, again, are really, really designed to go over like smoother surfaces. So if you've got like a really beat up floor, this is not ideal. These are pretty brittle. They'll chip and break on you. So if you've got smooth or power trout surface or whatever, just a ground prep surface, these are ideal for the really thick, gummy, sticky glues. If you've got a really dried out thin glue, you're better off just using like a 40 grit metal bond, something like that, or even a wolf cloth to remove that. This is for the real gummy, sticky stuff, okay? Um, also, a uh, thin rubberized membrane sometimes really good for this. If you've got a failing coating that's coming off, this will chip it really nice, and it doesn't gouge the floor either. So some people will actually use this if uh, they know that they've got a customer who wants a CPC class A finish, which is just a cream finish, so they don't want to see any uh, salt and pepper or even an aggregate. 
Uh, so this will actually give you that ability to scrape off whatever's on the surface and then just follow it with a, maybe an 80 grit metal bond and not uh, ground too deep and show aggregates or salt and pepper. So keep that in mind. Uh, they're set up to go both directions, as I mentioned before. Uh, usually we'll run three all together when you're running heavier machines like a PDG-8000. Uh, some guys will actually take out that middle one and they'll run just the outer, upper, and lower one and it'll allow self-cleaning with that gap between so they don't load up so bad. So you can run that with this uh, PDG-8000 or 6000, which is ideal. Some people even take off that very lower one and just run the upper one, the single one by itself for lightweight machines like a PDG-5000. Now when these tools do get dull, you'll we'll have to unbolt them and rotate them, clock them a quarter turn each time so you have all four sides to use as sharp edges. So when they do dull, that's what you need to do to, to rotate clock this. Uh, let's say you're getting really close to the, the job site and you're almost done, you can see they've slowed down. You can actually spin this these tools in reverse opposite direction and it basically slightly sharpens them. It'll buy you a little bit more time. So run about five, 10 minutes and it may get you through the rest of the job without having to rotate, stop and rotate and clock on each one of these. So just a tip that may help you out as well. Uh, these are very brittle tools. So you wanna make sure when you do tighten these down, don't over torque them. You wanna make, make sure they're just snug because if they're too tight, they actually have a tendency to chip and break next to each other. So have them just snug so they have a little bit of uh, ability to move so they don't chip and break too easy on you. Next up, bush hammer tools. Bush hammer tools are ideally a surface prep type tool. Uh, they can do some removal, but surface prep is a more ideal purpose and use for them. Um, really, they have basically have tungsten carbide uh, tips that are brazed down inside of each one of these wheels and they roll on some roller bearings and they fit onto the bottom machine just like normal. And you'll see that we do have holes also in each plate and we do recommend to bolt these to the plate also. Otherwise these machines can start bouncing around and you can see a plate fly out. So highly recommend to throw some bolts into this to make sure they don't fly off the machine. Again, ideal for surface prep. So if you're looking for, let's say maybe a CSP, like an iCry uh, CSP of four to like six, you can achieve a concrete surface prep in that range with bush hammers under say a SACE grinder. Um, you can achieve more uh, closer to this uh, four CSP of four or even five if you have six tools on the machine and you can actually run it a little bit faster and counterbalance weights to make sure you're not gonna dig as deep. Or you can slow it down a little bit RPM wise add some head pressure weights, maybe even take three opposing off and just only leave three tools per plate to try and get a little bit more aggressive and get a deeper, rougher profile to ensure you get closer to that CSP of say like six or something like that. So great ideal purpose for this. Uh, it's very, being commonly used now even for like waterproofing membranes under uh, underlayments before underlayments go down. Real common for that. Uh, when it comes to coating removal, uh, they really work good on if you have a coating that's already starting to fail or come up. So. Uh, if it's cementitious base or if let's say you've got like an epoxy or something that's brittle, that's chipping up, these are great for that. They'll pop it off really fast. Uh, mortar beds, uh, overlayments, underlayments, say that they're failing or something. These are really good to pop those up and actually get it off the surface. So that's really what they're ideal for when you're looking for uh, removal when it comes to that. We also really like to recommend these for large ag exposure. So again, if you're looking for that um, uh, CPC, let's say of class uh, C, and you're trying to get to large ag exposure, this is a good way to get down to that large aggregate fast and then follow this up with say like a 25 grit metal bond or even a wolf claw to smooth that out and then start honing and processing and polishing that up to a full shine. Uh, you will notice in front of me, we do have uh, multiple different sizes. So a lot of people don't realize we actually have this taller skirt for bush hammers because the height of this is so tall and you need a taller skirt. So for comparison, this is a standard skirt for running basic metal bonds. You can see the height of that compared to a uh, bush hammer skirt, which is next to it. We do offer this in all sizes. This is for a PDG 8000. We have them for 6K and 5K as well for all the different size machines. Um, also, since we're on the topic of skirts, we do also offer, unrelated to bush hammers, we do offer a white skirt. And a lot of people didn't realize we had that. So if you're in a finished environment where you have finished walls, uh, black has a tendency to rub it against the wall and leave some lines, we do have white skirts for those guys that are finishing and polishing out and need a white skirt is available. 
Um, on the bush hammers, we do actually have, uh, this is the wear items, I wanted to show you this. This is basically your tung the tungsten carbide wheel. That is gonna be a wear surface, you're gonna, or a wear tool you're gonna uh, have to replace, along with the two bearings that go inside. You're gonna reuse the housing, and you're also gonna reuse the plates on this as well. So those are your wear items on the bush hammers. Um, the size plates you have here, this is obviously for like a smaller machine, like a 5,000 or a 6,000, three per plate. And then when you get to the larger, heavier machines, like your PDG 8,000, you'll have six. This is how it comes bolted up. Like I said, you can go three per plate. If you need to get a little bit more aggressive, you have that ability, but it's not always the uh, uh, most ideal because it can get very, very aggressive. Um, Bush hammers, uh, they are a really effective tool. However, they're, they're not the cheapest tool out there. So when you're trying to achieve a surface prep of, like I said again, a CSP of say four to six, shot blasting and scare fires are a little bit cheaper than these. But if you don't own one of those machines, you already have a grinder and it's not a large uh, square footage job, this is ideal. You don't have to go out and get another machine. You already have it on site. And there are some advantages. This gives you a nice monolithic profile, whereas a shot blaster and scare fire get those overlap lines and you'll see those lines. So uh, that can cause problems later if you don't go thick enough with your coating sometimes and use more material with your coatings, whereas this is monolithic and flat and consistent. So pros and cons, but it's good to keep that in mind. Last and most recently added to our Wolf series of tools, the Wolf Claw. Wolf Claw is a general purpose removal tool. Uh, it's ideal to be ran for light removal of coatings, uh, glue, different types of materials, and then follow up, to, easy to follow up with polishing. Uh, because of its uh, unique uh, segment shape and its blend of grits, uh, you have the ability to do very aggressive removal that basically a 25 metal bond grit can do, but yet follow this up normally with say a 100 grit hybrid, even maybe a 50 grit hybrid. So sometimes it can even save you a step in the grinding stages because it's so unique and it's so aggressive, but yet very smooth and you're done with the very end, the profile. Uh, again, removal can be anything from thin uh, carpet glues, VCT glue, things like that. Uh, uh, urethanes, thin urethanes, polyaspartic, any kind of thin material. Again, uh, all these tools prints can be used wet or dry. We found that the, the wolf claws were originally designed to be used wet. We have quite a few guys using them dry as well. Um, we have found though, if you're trying to use, let's say on a really hard slab, you're gonna be using the gold bond because that is a softer bond. We have found sometimes you can't jump straight to 100 grit uh, hybrid from this gold bond. You may have to put something like an 80 grit metal in between. Uh, if you don't have that, you could use a quick cut uh, or you could even use, let's say, a 50 grit hybrid to make that transition. So harder concrete, sometimes you can't make that jump. But when you're dealing with softer concrete or even medium concrete, a lot of times with, the, let's say, the black, for example, the black bond, you can pretty easily jump from this into, say, your 100 grit dry hybrid. Now, using them wet, uh, almost always you can go from this straight into, say, your 100 grit C bond hybrid, no issues at all, to save you that extra step. So again, really good tool designed for uh, coating removal. We've seen up to, say, 20 mils of materials. Uh, very, very effective on just even moisture membranes, all sorts of different things. Extremely popular product to the point now where we've only had these two bonds for the last, let's say, a little over a year now, the gold and the black. So, uh, big reveal. We are coming out with, now we have a blue that's gonna be coming out pretty soon and also a yellow. So if you're familiar with our series of tools, you'll know that we do have six bonds. We're slowly growing this series of tools to have different bonds that are being offered. So you all are asking for these products, we're starting to come out with it. So hopefully sooner or later, we're gonna have the yellow bond coming out soon as well as the blue, giving you more bond options to go throughout. If you want more information about the Wolf Claw tool series of tools, we did do a special on this a video that's in our YouTube channel. Go check that out and get some more information. For more information about our Wolf Series tools, go to sacecompany.com or contact your local sales rep.